Thank you all so much for coming out here. Uh, I'm. Yeah. Um, I am Mike Trapp. Uh, this is um actually. Okay. I guess so. Yeah. Um, first, uh, let's go ahead and let's bring out our contestants. Uh, our first one here. He's written for Nintendo and Marvel, and currently writes for Full Frontal with Samantha B. And he's currently building a mini arcade in a dollhouse. It's Mike Drucker, everyone. She's a college humor and dorkly cast member and host of Dropout Gaming on Twitch. As her child, her favorite sweater had teddy bears on it, buttoned all the way up to the top, but she would just button the top button and pretend it was a wizard's cloak. It's Carolyn Page. <laughs> and she's written for The Tonight Show, starring Jimmy Fallon, and most recently for the upcoming Untitled Amy Hogger Project for TBS, it's Alex Song. I forgot to say yours. When she was in fourth grade, she spent most of her time maintaining a Dragon Ball Z fan site she created with the domain name zwarriors.net. Uh, I guess it's now time to choose our, our fan champion. Ladies and gentlemen, your audience champion, Jamel. Now, uh, in case you have... <laughs> all right, all right, we're going to calm this down right now. Uh, now, uh, in case you haven't played before, Jamel, I don't know if you've played before, um, uh, this is, uh, uh, the rules are very simple. I have a stack of incorrect statements here about the things that you know and love. It's up for you to ding in and correct me. Uh, whoever uh, uh, can correct me first will get the point. You do have to proceed your corrections with the phrase, um, actually, and you can interrupt me whenever you want. Very simple rules. Uh, now, for this very special live show that we're doing. Uh, if the four folks up here are stumped, I will throw to the audience to see if anyone out there can, uh, can uh, correct me correctly. Um, in the past, this has been for the usual prize, which is meaningless points. Uh, this time, it'll be for something even grander, merchandise. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, uh, if, if we end up throwing to the crowd, if you correct me correctly, uh, we have an um actually shirt uh, for you of the kind that this, you see our three, fine, uh, three, three um actually contestants uh, <laughs> be wearing, well, whatever. Uh, <laughs> the things that they are wearing that say um actually. Um, uh, so, the last thing I'll say before we jump in here, uh, I recognize that coming to Comic-Con and playing this game is just jumping into a pool for, full of sharks, right? I understand that. And I also recognize that sweetening the pot with t-shirts is just chumming the waters, okay? So I understand what I'm doing here. So the, the last rule here is kind of like a be cool thing. When I throw to corrections, one, let's be a little calm. I'll, I'll try, to, try to pull from all over the crowd. Uh, and remember, <laughs> Adding more information is not a correction. Rewording what I have said is not a correction. There are wrong things here, people, and I'm looking for the thing that's wrong. Very cool. Um, with that, I think we'll jump right into it. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Bells at the ready. Here's our first statement. Releasing shortly after the Nintendo GameCube launch, Super Smash Bros. Melee quickly became a fan favorite. Despite Melee have o having over two dozen playable characters, at the time, no character on the roster had yet starred in their own GameCube game. Yes, Drucker. Mario had starred in Mario Sunshine? Um, actually, Mario had starred in Mario Sunshine? Incorrect. Uh, As no. you can tell from the murmurs from no. the crowd. <laughs> the dis disapproving Boo. murmurs. <laughs> Uh, any other guess? I'll read it one more time while you ponder. Releasing shortly after the Nintendo GameCube launch, Super Smash Bros. Melee quickly became a fan favorite. Despite Melee having over two dozen playable characters, at the time, no character on the roster had yet starred in their own GameCube game. Yeah. I know what it is. Alex. Um, actually, um, I don't know the answer, but I love playing Ness. That was my favorite <laughs> character. <laughs> <laughs> applause from all the Ness mains. <laughs> uh, well, can't give you the point for that, but Ness rules. 
Any other? Yeah, Jamel. Um, actually, uh, Wind Waker? No, no. Sorry. Uh, uh, Carolyn, do you have a guess, or are you uh, going to throw it to the audience? Uh, I'll, I'll throw it to the audience. We're going to throw it to the audience. To the audience. I, I, I saw a very eager hand up here first, so go. Uh, go ahead. Tell me what's up here. Uh, I'm going to give it to you, even though you didn't say I'm actually. Uh, but yes, we are looking for Luigi. Uh, Luigi had Luigi's mansion at the start. Um, actually, you didn't say that rule. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, actually, it was Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> I'm not, look, I'm going to go a little easier on the audience, because they don't have the, all eyes on them, okay? There's Everyone so remember, though, them. say um, actually. Uh, yeah, it kind of feels like Luigi gets the short end of the stick sometimes, right? Like, he gets all the, uh, it's like, you get the game where you get to vacuum and be around ghosts all the time. Like, this is clearly a job that Mario didn't want. Um, well, that point uh, and shirt will go to, uh, go to our, our audience member right here in the front. Oh, yay! Here's our next one. This is about uh, uh, Disney animated features. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> it's so funny doing this show because sometimes you'll just say a topic and there'll be a murmur through the crowd. It's like, oh, yes, yes, we approve of this. Yeah. <laughs> Frozen 2 marks the start of what could be a huge change for Walt Disney Animation Studios, which traditionally never releases direct follow ups to their films in theaters. While there have been direct to video sequels like Kronk's New Groove and Cinderella 3, A Twist in Time, the only other theatrical sequel ever produced by the studio was 2018's Ralph Breaks the Internet. Yeah, Jamel. Um, actually, Toy Story 2 was in theaters. Uh, we uh, said Walt Disney Animation Studios, which is distinct from Pixar. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, that's the game we're playing here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, Carolyn. Um, actually, there have been other releases in theaters. Can you be more specific? <laughs> um, there was... Um, Brother Bear? <laughs> um, not uh, The Little Mermaid. Mm -hmm. Not The Beauty Are you going to list every, every animated... Not The Lion King. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, not Aladdin nope, to <laughs> 2. <laughs> the Three hours <laughs> later, we'll still be here as you're listing um, things. Uh, uh, Jamel, you, you have a second? Fantasia 3000. Ooh. Oh. Uh, I'm actually Fantasia 2000. <laughs> 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 Look, you're up here on the... You're I'm up actually, here. you got it wrong already, and you got it wrong, Fantasia 2000. <laughs> oh, I don't care I'm if I'm the villain Fantasia here. 3, <laughs> uh, that, uh, uh, you are up on the day, so I'm going to be a little harder on you. It is, uh, uh, there's there are actually two answers I would have accepted here. I'm actually, uh, so Fantasia 2000 is uh, one that I would have accepted here. That'll be a point for Carolyn. There is another Ooh, one you. out there. Oh, I saw a, a hand go up over here immediately. What's that? It is Rescuers oh! Down Under. Oh! Rescuers <laughs> Down Under. Wow. That's a great movie. Whoa, 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 there's murmurs, there's murmurs and anger. Yeah, yeah, oh, here we go. <laughs> what, uh, yeah, what, are, are, you, are you thinking the same thing everyone else is murmuring? Was it in theaters? Ooh, interesting. Uh, well, we do have uh, a fact checker here ready for just such instances as this. Um, uh, while, while, we, uh, while we check on that, uh, in case you're wondering, Cinderella 3, A Twist in Time, is about one of the stepsisters stealing the fairy godmother's magic wand and wreaking magical havoc, uh, rewriting time, <laughs> doing, doing the kind of things you would uh, expect to happen if magic existed. Yeah. 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 Um, do we're we, gonna screen we'll, it now. We'll keep it going. <laughs> yeah, and now a special treat for you. Cinderella 3, a twist in time. Uh, we'll keep checking on that. We'll move along. If we, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, just, just keep, keep me honest. Uh, if we need to come back to you, we will. All right, uh, that point went to Carolyn. Uh, narrowly avoided by Jamel there, I'm sorry. It happens. All right, I, I don't know, give that man a shirt. <laughs> well, I learned something here today. Um, great. Uh, here's our next statement. This is about Skyrim. Oh. 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 All right. When dragons return to Skyrim, most of them are itching for a fight with the dragonborn. One notable exception is Miralax, a wise old dragon who aids the Dovahkiin in their quest to defeat... Yes? 
Carolyn? Um, actually, it's Parthenax. It is Parthenax. Miralex is an over-the-counter laxative. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> Other drug names that sound like dragons include Zantac, Malax, and Pyrethrin. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. This is wizardy, more wizardy name. Uh, yeah, that was kind of a gimme. We just kind of wanted to throw Miralax in there as a dragon name. There you go. Mighty aspirin and flames, <laughs> or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is uh, this is a fan submitted question. I decided to pull one of these in here. Uh, is there a chance that Kitlish is here today? I doubt it, but that would be crazy if it was. No? Well, if your handle is Kitlish, we're asking this question now. I hope you're able to see the stream. Um, here we go. This is a Pokemon question. Mm, mm. Mm. <laughs> Unknown, the symbol Pokemon is a psychic-type Pokemon first discovered in the ruins of Alf that is only capable of learning one move, hidden power. Unknown's primary appeal is as an alphabet. Though it has no evolutions, this one Pokemon has 26 different forms, one for each letter of the Roman alphabet. Can you repeat the question? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> she knows it, though. That doesn't matter. <laughs> um. Unknown, the symbol Pokemon, <laughs> is a psychic-type Pokemon first discovered in the ruins of Alf that is only capable of learning one move, hidden power. Unknown's primary appeal is as an alphabet. Though it has no evolutions, this one Pokemon has 26 different forms, one for each letter of the Roman alphabet. Yes, Carolyn. Um, actually, Unknown is not a psychic-type Pokemon? It is. <laughs> uh, who was, was that, Alex? That's me. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, there's 27, also the Enye. Ooh, you are, you're on the right track, but oh, your specifics okay. are wrong, Jamel. Um, actually, there's an exclamation point and a question mark. That is correct. Ah. Whoa! <laughs> your champion! Whoa, very um, the more, the more I learn about Pokemon, the more nightmarish the whole world seems. Oh, it's terrifying. It's, it's like terrifying. you're using living things as a writing system? <laughs> Have yeah. you no shame? Um, half yes, of the Pokemon are like some... cuddly bears and then the other half are like murder victims. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you read any entry on ghost type Pokemon, yeah. they're the most horrifying <laughs> things you've ever heard. Um, uh, yeah, and I guess somehow they got by without punctuation for a while. So there's that. Um, our next, uh, this brings us to our first shiny question. We're going to do shiny questions here. Uh, this is a game we call Hear Me Roar. Uh, so uh, uh, this is a sound-based game. We're going to play uh, six sounds for you and see if you can identify what uh, property these sounds are from. Uh, the theme for this, uh, because I wanted to annoy everyone in this room, is alarms. These are, <laughs> these are warning signs, alarms, things to, to, oh, to no. warn you about danger. <laughs> um, so uh, these are all alarms here. Uh, whoever can identify the most will get the point. Uh, and as before, if we stump everyone up here, we'll throw to the audience. Let's hear that first sound. Yes, Carolyn. Um, actually, that's from Jurassic Park. It's not Jurassic Park. Oh. Action stations. Action stations. Oh. Mm. Okay. Ah, the murmur of recognition. Uh, do you want to hear it again? Let's hear yeah. It again. <laughs> <laughs> Action stations. Yeah, Alex. Um, actually, it's from Bioshock. It's not. Nope. Okay. Um, passes or guesses up here? Okay. Throw uh, the crowd, or do you have a guess? Yeah, Jamel. Um, actually, it's from Alien. Mm -mm, nah. Not Alien. I, I got nothing. You got nothing. Okay. Some, I think it was you I heard. It was like, I got it. <laughs> so that enthusiasm. So where's it from? Um, actually, that's from that is Battlestar. Oh, Galactica. yeah. That was close. Space. Very good. Very good. That's good. Uh, all right. Let's play the next sound there. Uh, that's my dad. <laughs> uh, I, I, I hope not. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> can, we, can we hear it again? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, Carolyn. Um, actually, that's a ship. That's a boat? <laughs> that is not a ship, no. I don't ship it. Uh, 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 let's hear it one more time, just for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is your dad. It is your, 
I, you know what? I take it back, Mike. That is your dad. <laughs> now that I listen to it. Yeah, it's, it's Dennis Drucker. Uh, any other guesses, or should we throw the crowd here? All right. I haven't drawn from this over here, so you gentlemen doing the um actually finger and everything, uh, tell us what this is. That's the Horn of Gondor. Oh, uh, yeah. Classic Horn of Gondor. Oh, right. Duh. Um, right. Actually, That's it's my... probably recorded from a oh, ship. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Foley artist probably got that from a yeah, ship. Yeah, it's, it's the Horn of Gondor. I, I will say there was, um, uh, this is a total tangent, but whatever, it's my show. Uh, <laughs> um, when we were making Troopers, there's a scene where, uh, there, where a guard like blows a big horn, and we were in the sound mix trying to figure out like the right sound for that, and I've never laughed harder than putting the stupidest sounds in that horn. <laughs> just seeing this footage of this huge, terrified guy just blow this horn, and just goes like, <laughs> Incredible. Um, well, let, let's play that third sound here. <laughs> What is Star Trek? That is Star Trek. All yeah, right. he had to put that in. I got the easiest one. <laughs> uh, let's play the fourth one there. Oh, Mike, you didn't say I'm actually. You said what is as if you're I'm on Jeopardy. Oh, it is. All right. I'm um, actually, what is Star Trek? Oh! oh, one day you'll be on the guillotine, too. <laughs> I'm actually, I think, what I think, is Star Trek? I think Jamel is. I, oh. I got it. I got it. You got it. You got it. Great. We'll give it to Jamel. <laughs> Thank you for keeping me honest. Uh, let's play that fourth sound there. Uh, Carolyn. Um, actually, that's from Zelda. That is from Zelda. That's Woo! a Bo Coblin horn. Oh. <laughs> it's in Breath of the Wild. It's in Breath of the Wild. That's where we pulled it from. You nerd. Don't nerd me. <laughs> that's like, that feels like... Meet me out back. I'm going to fight you. <laughs> Meet me outside. Meet me outside. That had like the same tone as like the old woman in Princess Bride who's like, boo! <laughs> boo! <laughs> You had true love. <laughs> you had a point, and you didn't give enough information. <laughs> um, let's hear sound number five. <laughs> this is maybe the hardest one on here. Did he ding? He did. Ooh, oh. even the crowd. Kind of, sure. oh, okay. I don't Any it was sure. It was a soft ding, but. Yeah. Was that? It was an unsure ding. Hmm? It was an unsure ding. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. Can we hear it? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, actually, Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Well, I'm actually Star Wars. Is that what you said? I'm um, actually Star Wars. No, no, it's yeah. not Star Wars. Can we hear it again? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a little quieter. <laughs> Is it like Das Boot or something? <laughs> <laughs> it's not Das Boot. No. I didn't even say it. I'm actually. I don't think it was. Yeah. But you, you classic. so didn't want the point. Like this better not be Das Boot. <laughs> um, Carolyn, do you have a guess? We want to throw to the audience. I'm gonna um actually say that that is from my internal monologue walking around the very crowded, <laughs> crowded Javits Center. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 that's okay, not it. Okay. Uh, do, uh, we, uh, I see you've been holding your hand up. Do you do you have a, a guess here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jurassic Park. It's not Jurassic Park. No. This is a yeah. Let's go from over here. I haven't pulled over here. Let's uh, sure. Let's do you here. Yeah, the glasses. Yeah. Nope, nope. Uh, how about you? Let's name our favorite alarms, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> nope, nope. I'm going to do one more. <laughs> Who, who's the most confident? Do your best. I'm in class and I know the answer. Arm really raised wow. up. Thing. Okay. Okay. Oh, that uh, guy. Uh, well, all right, you're really waving in the back. All right, what's your guess there? Spaceball. That is Spaceball. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was closest. Parody of Star Wars. He didn't say I'm actually. <laughs> <laughs> and from what I've heard, people are very mad when that happens. Uh, for, to for total clarity, that is the virgin alarm from Spaceballs. <laughs> um, so there's that. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's why uh, I didn't know We've got one more sound here. Most of these have been identified by the audience, um, but let's hear this last one. <laughs> yeah, Jamel. Um, actually, this one's Star Wars. That one is Star Wars. <laughs> um, all right, well, Jamel, you got that one, and you swiped the Star Trek red alert from Drucker. Mm. Uh, Carolyn, you got the Bo Coblin horn. The rest went to the audience, so technically the audience is the winner for this one, but... Wow. <laughs> 
But the next most is the audience champion, which is Jamel. So that point will go to Jamel. Uh, all right, our current score as it stands right now is two for Carolyn and three for Jamel. What, what about our, me and Mike? Yeah, how are we like, doing? How oh, are, are we doing? Oh, okay? and uh, and um, and uh, of, of good feelings and and uh, a hearty thanks to Drucker and to. <laughs> oh Alex. wow, so we're in the lead. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good emotional points. Um, Those matter. <laughs> here's our next statement. The seventh season of Parks and Recreation aired in 2015, but took place two years in the future in 2017, giving the show new science fiction elements. Some of the funny but ultimately inaccurate predictions of the future include the merger of Verizon, Exxon, and Chipotle into one company called Verzotle, Game of Thrones ending with Daenerys Targaryen marrying Jack Sparrow, the Chicago Cubs winning the World Series, a top 10 listicle winning a Pulitzer Prize, and Shia LaBeouf emerging as a successful, yep, um, actually, the Chicago Cubs did win the World Series. Sorry, what, say it again. You said, um, actually, the Chicago Cubs did win the World Series. That's correct. The Chicago Cubs did win the World Series. <laughs> the I one accurate prediction from there. Because I couldn't resist putting a sports question in here <laughs> uh, in, into Comic-Con. Just eyes glazed over on my face. <laughs> uh, another point for Jamel. Um, Very good. Uh, for those who are wondering or didn't remember uh, at the time, uh, they also claim that Verzotle is one of eight companies left in America <laughs> at that time <laughs> in history. Um, here is our next one. The Koopalings are a group of seven enemies who first appeared in Super Mario Bros. 3. The name of the Koopalings are all subtle nods to famous figures. The sunglasses-wearing Roy Koopa is named after Roy Orbison. Larry Koopa, who wields a wand, is named after U2's Larry Mullen Jr. Ludwig von Koopa, with his wild hair, gets his name from Beethoven. And in fact, all the remaining uh, uh, Koopalings, Lemmy Koopa, Wendy O. Koopa, Iggy Koopa, and Morton Koopa Jr. are also named after musicians. There's a lot there. Can you, I can you read that second part again? Because you sped through those names pretty fast. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, you did bad, Mike. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You I'll... shouldn't even host this show. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it, they're turning on me. <laughs> or excuse me. Gosh darn it. I'm sorry, Tony. Tony told me I wasn't allowed to swear. Tony. Mm. <laughs> we all fudge. I, they're turning on me. Um, here's that last section again. Uh, and in fact, all the remaining Kooplings, Lemmy Koopa, Wendy O. Koopa, Iggy Koopa, and Morton Koopa Jr. are also named after musicians. <laughs> Just no. The answer's like, no, nah, that can't be. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, Carolyn. Um, actually, Morton is not named after a musician. This is the, the weirdest one. More, uh, it, is, it is named after Morton Downey Jr., who is more known uh, for being like a, a, a radio personality, but did release enough, uh, release music that <laughs> I'm going to say it would be more incorrect to say he's not a musician. I don't want Morton Downey Jr. suing me, or uh, the estate, rather. So, so I get double points. No, you're strong. <laughs> Sorry, oh, no points. <laughs> Uh, I'm actually Wendy Koopa? Uh, nope. <laughs> you guys, just guess a name. You have a chance. <laughs> yeah, I, I zoned out. <laughs> Dave you, Koopa? What, what, uh, you, uh, yeah, you, what's uh, over here? Yeah, you got your hand raised. That, that's true. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's still named after Morton Downey Jr. regardless. Uh, uh, so at least one of them is a musician. It's not incorrect what I've said here, gosh darn it. <laughs> you happy, Tony? Gosh darn it. Great. Um, uh, uh, we have, uh, let's, let's try here. Do you have a I guess? Yeah. Um, actually, Bowser, uh, Bowser Jr. is also a Koopaling. Uh, oh, interesting. I don't think Bowser Jr. is technically a Koopaling. No, not. Oh, not. Hey, hey, everyone calm down. <laughs> Everyone just turns into me. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's go. Wh where haven't I been? Um, uh, yeah, let's go here in the middle. Uh, I, sorry, I didn't, can you say it one more time? Uh, no, no, nope. That's, that's not the answer we're looking for. Yeah, over here. Uh, no, I, I might actually call it, because this is also a really tricky one, unless someone's like, I, I know this, why won't you answer? You, yeah, well, go ahead. Shut it down! Turn off the cameras! Turn off the cameras! It's over! The show's canceled! <laughs>
I've never seen someone. Joker Riot! Joker hold Riot! Hold on no, to okay. a correction for a previous question. Joker Riot? That's I'm so sorry. Well, fine. <laughs> well, fine. Um, we'll, we'll go ahead and call it. Here. <laughs> 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 the most confident man at Comic-Con. <laughs> Strutting around, and I earned this shirt. <laughs> I saved this correction up in the bank, and it accrued interest. <laughs> um, uh, we'll go ahead, we'll call this one, uh, the, the, this, just because it's a weird piece of trivia, not because I necessarily expected anyone to know it. Um, in point of fact, the, uh, uh, Larry, uh, uh, Larry Koopa is not named after Mel Larry Mullen Jr. Uh, all the other ones are named after musicians. Uh, the person who was responsible for the, uh, the English uh, carryover just thought that Koopaling looked like a Larry. <laughs> <laughs> had a perfectly good pattern with everything else and uh, just thought looked like a Larry. Um, so, so that's it. I also want to point out that even though they, they, like, we can see where the name comes from, it's like being named after, after people, but the existence of Morton Koopa Jr. also implies the existence of a Morton Koopa. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, he's adopted. Yeah, there's got to be a Morton Koopa out there. Uh, so yeah, like, where's, that, where's Morton Koopa's game? That's all I want to know. Uh, so people are clamoring for that. <laughs> people, where's more? Tell us about Morton Cooper Jr.'s father. <laughs> There's probably fan fiction that like really goes in on that. <laughs> yeah. I'd put money on it. Uh, yes, we all want to know. Um, all right, here's our next one. This is about Marvel Comics. Marvel Comics. I gotta get this. In the controversial storyline, One Day More, Peter Parker makes a deal with Mephisto, a demonic character based on Mephistopheles of Faust legend. Mephisto agrees to save the life of Parker's elderly Aunt May and make the world forget the true identity of Spider-Man in exchange for Peter Parker's marriage with Mary Jane Watson. It's just a factual statement. Yeah, Carolyn. Um, actually, it's in exchange for his soul. No, that's like a normal thing that a <laughs> devil would trade for, but it's, I want your marriage. I'm more of an X-Men guy. Yeah. So, <laughs> Relationship <laughs> goals, that's what I want. Your marriage, Peter Parker. Uh, Could you read it again? again? Yes. Sorry. In the controversial storyline, One Day More, Peter Parker makes a deal with Mephisto, a demonic character based on Mephistopheles of the Faust legend. Mephisto agrees, yes? Um, actually, it's One More Day. Ooh. Oh, wow. Gosh, Bridgman wrote this question. Everyone boo this man. <laughs> what is happening here? It's chaos. <laughs> that is the mistake. You know what? You caught a mistake. Uh, whatever. Yeah, yeah, take it. Uh, yeah, you still get a point for that. Um, that's not the mistake we're looking for, but you'll get that point. Uh, that was Wait. Jamel, right? Yeah. Can you Great. read the rest of the question? Absolutely. <laughs> Find the thing that we intended to here. In the controversial storyline, one more day. <laughs> Peter Parker makes a deal with Mephisto, a demonic character based on Mephistopheles of the Faust legend. Mephisto agrees to save the life of Parker's elderly Aunt May and make the world forget the true identity of Spider-Man in exchange for Peter Parker's marriage with Mary Jane Watson. Yeah, Alex. Um, actually, Aunt May is young and hot. <laughs> That's true. That's true now. Yeah. How dare you? Uh, Can't deny guess. that. Incorrect, uh, unfortunately. I mean, I'm not going to tell you she's not young and hot, but, uh, you know, that's not what we're looking for. Um, uh, let's see. You, uh, uh, well, gosh, who, let's, we'll throw to the crowd. I see a couple of very, very firm hands in the air. <laughs> you keep jittering around, which makes me want to... Okay. Uh, no, that's not what we're looking for. Uh, back here, you've been that's you've dark. been trying to stare into my brain, so let's let's try that. <laughs> that's what we're looking for. Uh, uh, Mephisto, uh, uh, it doesn't like the memory. It's just at the same time that he's making a deal with Mephisto, he's also rewriting time with a completely different person. Uh, this is Doctor Strange. Yeah, but there's like. There's got to be some like some like efficiency there, Parker. You know, like if you're going to be like rewriting history with one guy, like how much would it have, couldn't you have like bargained with Mephisto a little bit? It's like I'm already giving you a great deal here. You're getting my marriage. Why don't you throw the memory wiping thing in for I don't know, like I won't be able to say the word the anymore or something like that. Like a real like low stakes bargaining. 
Um, well, Jamel, you'll, you caught the thing we didn't mean, and uh, audience <laughs> member, you caught the thing we did, so that point goes to you. Is there going to be some Les Mis trivia next? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have that, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, uh, here is, not, not this time, next time. Uh, this is about Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you which one. <laughs> In Full Metal Alchemist, brothers Edward and Alphonse Elric visit the home of Shao Tucker, a state alchemist who specializes in creating... Everyone already hates this. Too soon. Uh, Too um, soon. Um, as the crowd says, I'm um, actually, it's Chris Tucker. <laughs> Star of... <laughs> Uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're talking about <laughs> uh, A state alchemist who specializes in creating chimeras. They are horrified to discover that in his desperation to create a chimera capable of human speech, Shao Tucker broke the taboo of human transmutation for the first time by merging his young daughter with a dog to create a new creature. What? <laughs> 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 Did you just describe a dream you had? No, like, yeah. <laughs> what? The, the, so, Are you okay? Uh, um, everyone thinks that I had. Everyone on the panel thinks that I had a fever dream, and everyone <laughs> who's, who's knows seen it, it is, is so furious. <laughs> this is, yeah, um, I, I see a lot of very eager hands. I'm gonna have to choose from this side of the room because I haven't pulled over here all that often. Um, we, we've got we've got two working in tandem over here, so let's go over here. Yeah. That's correct. Uh, it wasn't wow. the first time his daughter is his wife. Yeah, he did. Very yeah, sad. He did. Uh, you, you all seem utterly baffled uh, uh, by this. Not, um, uh, but it's a deeply disturbing scene. Um, Very uh, much so. That, Very well, much so. Yeah, let's, and we got it right now. <laughs> We've interspliced Cinderella three and, <laughs> and that particular episode of Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we stole the fairy godmother's wand and made chimeras. Uh, <laughs> truly evil stepsisters. Um, our next question here is a video question. Um, uh, this, was an, this was an alternate question that was going to be for our first season that we never ended up using. So now we're going to use it for you fine mm -hmm. folks. Let's take a listen. Isn't it enough to Oh, hi everybody, it's me, Jonathan Colton. That was a snippet from my song, Skullcrusher Mountain, in which a mad scientist creates a monster by mixing monkeys and ponies together. You know, when you think about it, a lot of monsters are just two creatures mixed together, like griffins are eagles and lions, hippocampi are eagles and fish, and centaurs are horses and people. Can we, can we see it again? Like that second <laughs> part of it again, after the song. All right, yeah, all right, yeah, all right. after the song. Oh, you don't want to hear the song? Yeah, not the song. <laughs> monkeys and ponies together. You know, when you think about it, a lot of monsters are just two creatures mixed together, like griffins are eagles and lions, hippocampi are eagles and fish, and centaurs are horses and people. Yes, Carolyn. Um, actually, griffins are actually eagles and horses. Uh, no, you were thinking of hippogriffs. I am thinking of, always. You're always thinking of hippogriffs. <laughs> oh, uh, any other guesses from the panel here? Uh, uh, I just keep thinking, it seems like it's rude to call a centaur a horse and a person. It's just a centaur. <laughs> like, why are we erasing them? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I have a name. I'm not just a horse and a person. I, I'm a complete... The gr what are sum, you? It's greater than the sum of its parts, right. you know? It's a centaur. I'm a centaur, I understand man. what you're saying, it's but... A, it's no. not right. Uh, was that Alex? Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm actually... Hippocampi sounds like the one that's wrong, but I have no other specifics yeah. for you. <laughs> wait, wait. Can I give a real answer now? <laughs> um, actually, isn't the hippocampus just a part of the brain? A uh, hippocampus is a part of the brain, but is named after... Oh, is uh, it? Uh, yeah, it's, well, we'll get into that in a moment. Okay. Uh, but it's named... Uh, yes. Uh, um, uh, Alex, you are correct. You've identified the thing that's wrong. Do you want to venture a guess? Okay, as to what a, um, sure. Okay, fine. Uh, it's uh, a hippopotamus <laughs> <laughs> and an eagle. <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. You're so close. Know you know what? I'm, I'm going to give you the point, but I'm also going to throw it to the audience because okay. I see some people. I think I saw your hand shoot up almost immediately. So what's... Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's correct. If we can have horses and a fish, um, yeah. uh, and, it, and, and it is Greek for, uh, for like basically like sea, uh, seahorse. Uh, and the hippocampus in your brain is named is na so named because okay. it kind of looks like a seahorse, but not 
the horse fish one, the seahorse, you know, seahorses, the thing. Can I ask a question to the audience? This is something that I've long wondered. Where's the centaur's dick? Is it in the front where a human's dick would be, or where it's the where back. a horse's dick would be? We've or all drawn this. Dicks? Does it have two? I don't know if we reached a okay, consensus. Okay, tweet at me, and we'll all decide together. Where. Yeah. <laughs> Tony, Tony, is it okay if we talk about this? Okay, all right. Okay. So, so what we're horse genitalia is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I I kind of wonder like I wonder before like how centaurs sleep. It feels like you it would be like the worst. Like there's no good way for a centaur to like I guess it's sort of on your side, but even that it's just sort of like twisted and splayed around. Because well, horses sleep standing up, so wouldn't a centaur would just like close its eyes and just like. But yeah. then with the human part, like flop over or like flop back. <laughs> right. Or, like, at like, first. They just fold back. At, at first, yeah. I. I also thought you meant, like, how do centaurs sleep at night? Yeah, like, yeah. Mad at they them? know what they did. <laughs> <laughs> Gallivanting about the forbidden forest as they if they're allowed sinners. there. Uh, well, we'll give that With point to Alex, genitalia. and we'll also give that point to you for identifying a hippocampus. The audience is killing us. That's yeah, killing the audience us. is really killing you. Um, here's our, another shiny question here. We got another shiny question. Oh, shiny. Uh, and uh, generally, I'm sorry for kind of turning my back to the side of the crowd. It's just all my contestants are over here. So I'm going to try to turn out a little bit more, but I apologize in advance. Um, uh, this is a game uh, that we call Once More Without Feeling. <laughs> oh. So what I'm going to do here is I have, uh, I have six snippets of songs here on my card. Uh, I'm going to read the lyrics with no melody or rhythm and see if you can identify <laughs> what this is from just based on the lyrics. In this what, what it's from or the song title? I'm so sorry. Uh, what it's from. Okay, cool. What it's from. Okay. Uh, because in this case, we are doing uh, theme songs to animated shows. Oh. It's oh. got to Animated gotta shows. Uh, uh, as before, whoever can get the most will get the point. Uh, here is your first one. <clears throat> These are always really fun to do because I feel like I'm doing like a dramatic reading of the stupidest things. <laughs> Let's begin it. Bear and grin it. When you're in it, you can win it in a minute. When you spin it, spin it, spin it. Oh, yeah. uh, what is Tails? Or, sorry. <laughs> I'm actually, what is Tailspin? <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm actually what is Tailspin is an extra what is, but that is what we're looking for. That's Tailspin. I'm actually what is Tailspin. You did both. You I did, did both. Jeopardy and I just kept it. I'm I wanted actually. to be safe. Yeah. Uh, here's our second one. Best buds hanging strong. Best friends can do no wrong. Just two days. We need more. Video games. I'll beat your score. Watch cartoons on TV. Drink that frosty chug of freeze. Yeah, Jamel. Um, actually, what is The Weekenders? That is The Weekenders. What is? Wow. Also adding a what is. I like that we're adding more game shows onto this game show. <laughs> um, Love The Weekenders. Here's Good our show. third one. Look out. Clear the way. The ducks are here to play. Ducks rock. Ducks rock. Uh, yeah. I think it was Jamel first, right? Who was yeah, that? Was Jamel? First, yeah. Um, actually, what is DuckTales? That's not DuckTales. Ah. Oh. Um, actually, what is The Mighty Ducks? That is The Mighty Ducks. Is that a cartoon? That was a cartoon series, and they were <laughs> space ducks. Yeah. That, oh, okay. It's, it's the, uh, when I was like do, doing, doing research, it was like, we have to ask a question about the Mighty Ducks show at some point, because it's the most insane combination <laughs> of things. It's like, oh, they're from space, but they're ducks, and they play hockey, and they fight aliens. Are you still with me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, here is our fourth one. Driving in my car. Living like a star. Ice on my fingers and my toes, and I'm a Taurus. <laughs> I'll read that again. <laughs> Driving in my car, living like a star. Ice on my fingers and my toes, and I'm a Taurus. Oh, oh. Um. <laughs> Oh, uh, we're, we're all stumped here, and we have yeah, some very I, I, eager I folks know. back here. Let's go to the. You're waving your hat around. Let's go to you. Yeah. That's Aqua Teen uh, Hunger Force. Uh, okay. <laughs> I just said it in the goofiest way possible. Uh, oh, I should have known that. Yeah. Um, uh, here's our next one. You take everything that seems like fun. You stir it all up, and when you're done, rada, 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 rada. Rada, Rada. 
Uh, who who would ding over here? Jamel. <laughs> um, actually, it's Chowder. That's Chowder. <laughs> uh, and he, here's our last one. Rada, rada. Do, 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 do. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, 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 Drucker. Wait, I think Alex oh. went first? No, no, no. Jamel? <laughs> it's Jamel again. Um, actually, it's Doug. That's yeah. Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Doug. Yep. Wow. I couldn't resist doing that one. <laughs> it's like, this is going to be gibberish nonsense, but after rada, 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 you got to have do 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 uh, Well, that was uh, two for Mike, three for Jamel. The rest went to the audience, so that point's going to go to Jamel. Wow. wow. All right, here's our next one. The Fantastic Four actually often... Cons uh, cons uh, let me do that again. Guys, it's been a long day. The Fantastic Four actually often const constitutes six individuals in modern storylines. Reed Richards, Susan Richards, Ben Grimm, Johnny Storm, and the Richards' children, Franklin and Valeria. All of them are considered human mutates who differ from mutants in that their abilities were acquired through outside... Yes, Jamel. Um, actually, his name's Franklin. Sorry? So, um, actually, his name's Franklin. Uh, is that not what I said? Did I, I mean, you said, said Benjamin. You said, no, you said Franklin. Ben Grimm. Oh, God, I thought you said Ben Grimm. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. That's, that's an issue of pronunciation on my part. I've been an issue of just talking too much. Uh, I'll, I'll finish up that sentence I was on. All of them are considered human mutates who differ from mutants in that their abilities were acquired through outside means and were not genetically inherited. Yes. Um, actually, Franklin's a mutant. Uh, say one more time, sorry. Um, actually, Franklin Richards is a mutant. I think I can't hear the last word you're saying. I'm so Franklin's a mutant. Yes. Yeah. Or, uh, yes, that's correct. I mean, and there's, there's something else here, too. I'm um, actually the daughter's an inhuman. She was. She got the Terrigen mist. Um. No. No. <laughs> There's a lot of murmuring, which made me like death. I'm gonna. Oh, we'll go ahead and give you the point, Jamel. Um. Uh. Uh. You. You. You've. You've been. You've been so eager here since the first one up. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. You. <laughs> uh, Valeria has no powers whatsoever. That's correct. Yeah, <laughs> which is a power in its own right, uh, but, but not, not necessarily considered a mutation, uh, which means that the Fantastic Four, not four and not all necessarily fantastic. Uh, that's where we are right now. Uh, um, uh, but that point will go to Jamel. Um, hey, uh, yeah. yeah, you're champion. <laughs> I had to throw a Dragon Ball question in here. Okay. Yeah, okay. I can't, I can't guarantee I'll get it. <laughs> In Dragon Ball, Earth's moon has, been, has the potential to transform those of Saiyan heritage into their powerful great ape form. In order to transform, someone of Saiyan heritage must absorb 17 million Xeno units of moon-reflected sunlight, aka Blutz waves, through their eyes. Though adopting the great ape form was temporarily impossible after the moon was destroyed, it was made possible once again after Goku permanently restored it by removing his tail. Again, any time we ask an anime question, the, uh, yeah, who, who dinged? Jamel. Um, actually, the moon didn't come back from Goku removing his tail. Uh, the, the, the moon does come back from Goku removing his tail. Obviously. I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> look, we I know this. Look. Uh, any other guesses? <laughs> I, I, can I, so can much I hear the there. question one more time? Yeah. Yeah. In Dragon Ball, Earth's moon has the potential to transform those of Saiyan heritage into their powerful great ape form. In order to transform, someone of Saiyan heritage must absorb 17 million Xeno units of moon-reflected sunlight, aka Blutz waves, through their eyes. Though adopting the great ape form was temporarily impossible after the moon was destroyed, it was made possible once again after... Yes? Um, actually, Saiyans have a way to make an artificial moon to make their great ape form come. Oh! <laughs> Whoa! That was the best that was response. Pure sound there. Uh, that was a pure emotional reaction. Wow. Um, uh, that wasn't even what we were going for here. It, it is true. It, yeah. it is true. Look, if we don't allow if we don't allow technicalities, then what is this game even about? Um, we'll give you the point. Yeah, Carolyn. Um, actually, it doesn't have to be through their eyes. It could be through their butt. You're gonna say butt. You're, you're on the verge <laughs> no, of saying butt. I was butt. gonna say skin. 
skin. Okay. <laughs> which you have skin on your butt. Yes. 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 Um, that's some science for everybody. Else. Uh, <laughs> we'll give you that. The, the answer we were looking for is, is that uh, I said that Goku permanently restored the moon, uh, but in fact the moon has been destroyed multiple times over the series. Uh, destroyed, restored, destroyed again. Uh, in fact, we were even a little unclear when we were re researching this how many times the moon has been destroyed. I don't know if anyone out there knows a definitive answer to that. Three. Three times, great. Well, <laughs> someone's got to put security around the moon, I guess. Like, you know, destroy the moon once, like, yeah, shame, shame on, on you. you. Yeah. Destroy the moon three <laughs> times, that's my bad, you know? <laughs> um, we've got another shiny question for y'all here. That's shiny, speaking of shiny. This is a game called Needs More I so. Pixels. I so. Uh, so, in just a second here, we're gonna put uh, we're gonna put an image up on the screen that we have pixelated t to all to hell here. Uh, it, uh, it, we're gonna see if anyone can identify what it is just by these big blocky old pixels. Um, now the way we normally do this on the show, I'm gonna have to adjust for the live show here. So uh, the, the way this typically works is you'll each get exactly one guess. If all four of you pass, we'll make the image a little bit clearer. Um, uh, but I do want to give the audience a chance to chime in, but I also don't want it to turn into a big guessing thing throughout the crowd. So what I'm going to do is, if all four of you pass, I'll ask exactly one person from the audience, and then we'll move to the next level of clarity. Cool. Uh, let's take a look at that image. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that is a, a very... Firm, firm. <laughs> uh, I truly don't know who buzzed in first. Did anyone in the front row see who buzzed in first? It, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I'll be honest. I think Jamal me. did it. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm gonna. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say Alex. Alex. Oh, that's not. That's not right. I still You're love just you guys. being nice. To Was me. that? You're just being nice. I think we all know that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't know. I have to choose someone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let Jamel say yeah. so that the audience okay. can live another day. <laughs> okay, very. They will uh, riot. Very, very noble. Uh, cool. Uh, Jamel, the, the audience is clamoring for you, so go ahead. Thank you, audience. Yeah. Um, actually, it's Philip J. Fry. That is Philip J. Fry. Wow. Uh, I'll give you the point. Can you be more specific? Uh, can, can, you be, can you be more specific about, like, what. Uh, there, this is a very specific image of Fry. Do you know what this is? You don't, I'm gonna give you the point regardless, but I just, I'm just curious if you know. Is it, uh, Carolyn. Is it like on his license? Uh, no, it's not his license. Uh, Trucker. Is it the give, uh, give me your money thing, or I'll give, take my money? Uh, you're, 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 you're on the right track, but that's not oh, it. Wait, that, no, it's the I can't tell if you're joking Yes, that it's yeah. that. It's like, oh, I can't tell. Let's go, let's yeah, see yeah, this, yeah. let's see that fry. <laughs> yeah. I knew I knew it was a meme of some sort. I uh, I really wanted to do this one because I like the I like to imagine everyone in the audience making this exact face at this face as they look at the pixels. Um, that is uh, in fact Philip J. Fry, as identified by Jamel. Um, we are nearly out of time, so we will move to our last statement here. Um, our current scoreline, uh, unless I've miscounted something. Uh, zero for Mike Drucker, yep. uh, two for Carolyn, one for Alex, and nine for Jamel. <laughs> making, making Jamel our clear winner this, this evening. Are you correcting one? my scoreline? Have you been keeping track? Are you counting the ones that they like took away from each other? That's true. Oh. That's what? true. <laughs> what? Ah. Wow. Ah. You're going to beat, you, beat me you. up after the show. <laughs> you may not be dressed in a costume, but today you are a superhero. <laughs> wow. um, well, uh, we'll just we'll move to our last <laughs> question. <laughs> I'm not going to address this at all. I'm just going to avoid the controversy. Um, uh, as always, we end with real life skills. Woo! Woo. Oh. Seems like people sure can get tripped up when it comes to pluralization and possessives, even though the rules are fairly simple. 
Many singular nouns become plural by adding an S at the end, but you never form a plural by adding apostrophe S. You form the possessive form of a singular noun by adding apostrophe S at the end, even if that noun already, has, already ends in S. The possessive of plural nouns that end in S are formed by adding only an apostrophe. Yes. Um, it, it's acceptable both ways if you do uh, apostrophe S or just an apostrophe for a noun that ends with S? It is not, and I will put an end to this. Oh, no. You hear me? This is technically a word nerd question instead of a, 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 a real life skills, but God damn it. Uh, oh, no. Apostrophe S all the way. Yes. Um, um, actually, I went to grad school for English Lit and grammar is fluid. Oh. <laughs> you drop I, will, I will concede... I will concede, Mr. Mike Drucker, that that is the more correct answer here. <laughs> that, in fact, uh, g grammar and language is defined more by the, by the people that speak it, and uh, I'm being a stickler here. Yep. But being a stickler here is what we're doing. I'll give you the point <laughs> anyway, but there is, uh, there is in fact, something Wait, wrong here. One, yeah. one more, can you read it one more? Yeah, time? there's a lot of S's and apostrophes that I'm saying here. Seems like people sh sure can get tripped up when it comes to pluralization and possessives, even though the rules are fairly simple. Many singular nouns become plural by adding an S at the end, but you never form a plural by adding apostrophe S. You form the possessive form of a singular noun by adding apostrophe S at the end, even if that noun already ends in S. The possessive of plural nouns that end in S are formed by adding only an apostrophe. That question just made me high. Like, I just... <laughs> yeah, same. I'm tripping balls. Uh, you, you are so, yeah, you're so, yeah. Thank you. So, uh, I'm actually. Yeah. Uh, the plural uh, of a noun that ends in an S will only have an apostrophe at the end, and then the possessive form can't have an apostrophe at the end. Um, that is, uh, uh, that, I don't think that actually dis, uh, discounts anything I've said here, though I may have worded it poorly. I'm running out of time, so I'm actually just going to go, oh, you're so, oh, you're so you, you've got a wand Whoa. and everything. I've got to throw it to you. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I did say ending an S. I did try to counteract that. Uh, oh, okay. Last, last one. Last one. Um, actually, it's the means and apostrophe. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, we didn't think of that, did we? We always forget about it. Yeah, you think you're so smart, Trap. That wasn't what I was going for, but technically true. I'll give it to you. The answer I was looking for is that you c do sometimes form the plural with apostrophe S only in the form of letters. For example, straight A's, B's, you pluralize uh, letters with apostrophe Man, S. F's used. Oh, it's true. It's true. Your hate makes me stronger. You hear me? <laughs> Joker Ryan! Joker Ryan! Joker Ryan! Uh, all r uh, I'm going... We'll... we'll, 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 we'll uh, cap this off by saying that um, uh, Mike, uh, you now have you have one. <laughs> Carolyn, you have two. Alex, you have one. Jamel, you still have nine points. <laughs> Jamel, you are a winner. If you didn't win a shirt, uh, uh, the, the shirts are available for purchase on the store. Uh, and before we we round, round up here, uh, uh, I am. Uh, this is. Is, it's a personal plug, but whatever. Again, it's my show. Um, so uh, uh, yesterday we released uh, the first episode of the new show that I've been working on uh, called Ultra Mechatron Team Go, uh, a name designed to befuddle and confuse. They say that when you make a show, it should be hard to spell and hard to pronounce, right? Uh, so um, just before you go, uh, I, we want to show uh, the trailer to this, uh, to this series. I hope you check it out. It's one of my favorite things that I've ever, ever made. Um, this is it. Uh, Thank you to our contestants. Thank you to Jamel. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> and we'll close with this. Thank you all so much for coming.